Deputy Chief Minister, ministers, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. I'll start by saying that I'm, I've spent uh, 48 years dealing with uh, aviation, from 43 to 91. Now, the local shipping firm MH Bland had been established in Gibraltar by a Liverpool merchant Marcus Henry Bland to start uh, sea services to, between Gibraltar and Tangier. The, 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 the brothers Galleros uh, joined the company and during the, during the company the, the company was going to be sold and the, and the Galleros were very keen to buy it but they didn't have the, the necessary funds so um, the ex-members of the junta of the junta were a committee from the Catholic Cathedral who were responsible for the finances of the church. And the junta, not the junta, but when they left the church, the junta uh, lent them the money, the necessary funds. I'll tell you something about the junta because it's very interesting. The junta was a committee from the Catholic Church. In 1881, uh, Monsignor Gonzalo Gonzalo uh, Canilla was appointed Bishop of Gibraltar. The junta were completely against this appointment. Uh, Canilla was a very humble person. He was very, very helpful to the poor. He was very helpful in uh, settling down the, uh, the Maltese people who came to work to Gibraltar. On the day he was to carry out his ceremonial entry, into the cathedral, the, the junta, junta people were, were business people from Gibraltar, together with their friends, stood at the entrance of the cathedral and they did not allow him to go. So he had no option but to go home to his family in, in the Governor Street. A month, a week later, when it was announced that he was going to make the entry again, the governor and the police arranged to have people there to, to, to avoid any, any, any nonsense. But nonetheless, the, the junta people were present together with their friends. And a total of 43 people were detained. The Galleros then joined the, the, the Galleros with the, with the company where, where in, in, in 19, 1990, 1990 was a very um, eventful, very, very eventful um, year. The, uh, the, the Gibraltar Airways was formed in 1931. It was the first company to be uh, uh, registered in Gibraltar. Prior to that, all the companies were uh, registered in England. Uh, apart from Gibraltar was being, being um, appointed, the, Graf, uh, the German Graf Zeppelin flew over the Bay of Gibraltar. As a five-year-old boy, I remember the Zeppelin going over and the North Atlantic crossing was done. And later in 19, 19, 1928, if you'll excuse me a moment. In 1928, the Blanc, recognizing that the potential for motoring between France, Spain, and Morocco, Blanc Line pioneered the first car ferry service across the Strait. Now, with the arrival of the airplane, it seemed obvious to explore the feasibility of an air service. But the only possible flat piece pier of land being occupied by the race course and sport fields, the kennels, the Royal Calpe Hunt and the public gardens, all of which were considered essential to Gibraltar. Tanya was a rather exposed harbour 
but the service, but the services, I feel it seemed that the flight shot was was an that the, the choice was an amphibian. By coincidence, an amphibian aircraft flew from London to Gibraltar on its way to Nigeria, and the and the the the, the amphibian aircraft stayed in Gibraltar for the days, offering joy rides and a crossing over to Tangier. The Galleros, knowing this, contacted their respective company in England and they, they acquired, um, um, they acquired um, an amphibian aircraft at the cost of, uh, the cost of uh, 300 pounds, as you can see on the screen. The, 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 service, the service was inaugurated in August, in, in August that year, that year, in 1931, and, and it, did, it lasted for six months. But unfortunately, notwithstanding the efforts made to promote the service, only one passenger traveled in every flight. So, so the thing was not viable. And apart from that, the aircraft had an accident and it was damaged. So they, 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 they suspended all the services. And the company stayed dormant. Now, in, uh, in 19... the January board meeting of the plan, a decision was taken to, su to suspend the amphibian operation. And the following minutes were recorded that the local government should the, do their best endeavors with the Spanish government through the Foreign Office with the object of arranging for a neutral ground to be turned into an aerodrome for our use. If some of you will remember the neutral grounds, which extended, extended from the Four Corners to the Spanish frontier, about 600 meters. Um, from the minutes of the clear that the directors were conf confident that local government would also provide financial aid for the operation. Unknown at the time to the airline was the fact that His Majesty's government in London had already decided to build an airfield. In February 1932, a secret memorandum passed from the War Office to the Governor, advising him that work should begin on preparing an emergency airstrip across the race course. In the event, the process of the building this airstrip took much longer than either the British government or Gibraltar Airways had expected. So then, then it was decided to, to then in 19, 1943, BOAC, BOAC British Overseas Airways Corporation, which is, was the national airline of, the, of, of England, had a base in Gibraltar. There, 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 there was about 40 of the staff from England in Gibraltar base, and they consisted of the manager, um, uh, traffic, traffic handling the passengers and the aircraft, operations, um, engineers, and accountants. Uh, when I was 17, on the, third, on, the, on the 21st of August, in Madeira, I, joined, I, I find, signed in the British Consul to join the army. And I came over to Gibraltar in 43 with another three colleagues. And here, when I came to Gibraltar, the GDF, I had to, I had to join the AFS, the Auxiliary Fire Services, and I, was, I had to go twice a week for drills. So I joined BOAC as a traffic clerk. Traffic clerk, uh, handling with the ship documents and passengers. And, uh, and, and 40, when, when 45, in 1945, the, the war ended, and I was in the in the GDF. When I when I left the GDF, then I, having been working with BOAC, in '47, Blands called me if I would join, the, if I would join the the airline, and the, then the then the we started operating. Um, British Airways leased two, uh, two aircraft, or Blanche leased two aircraft from BAA 
and they wear the 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 the, the, the rapid. The, the rapid. You have to wait. They repeat with eight-seater aircraft, and they flew between the important time, twice in the morning and twice in the afternoon. Now the repeats were replaced by the DC-3, the Dakota. The Dakota used to do the service to one in the morning and one in the evening to Tangier, and also Gibraltar, Madrid. Gibraltar, Madrid. <laughs> and uh, then this aircraft was uh, uh, replaced by the Viscount. The Viscount was a, f a f 47 seater aircraft, 47 seater aircraft, and he did the service to one in the morning and one in the evening to Tangier. They also, they also did the Madrid flight, and they did a number of charters. I've got a long way to go yet. <laughs> um, um, the, the, the BOEC operated a flight from London, Lisbon, Gibraltar in '46. Then it was taken over by BEA. And BEA then started flying London, Gibraltar with Vikings. Vikings were 37 seaters. Now, the air, there was no air terminal in Gibraltar. It was a blister hangar where the MOD buildings are at the moment, next to Eroski. And the aircraft used to park where the old the air terminal was. So it meant that the passengers had to disembark, cross the road, and into the terminal. And so as not to the, the, the passengers going straight to Spain or straight to, to, to Gibraltar, without going to the immigration, we had to collect the passports there. Uh, in the 1950s and 1960s, there, uh, there was no airport in Malaga, and we, in Gibraltar we had a lot of air traffic from England and charters from Germany, from uh, Switzerland, from Finland and from Ireland with groups going to Spain. They used to come to Gibraltar and then coast to Spain. And the BEA, BEA the passengers holding tickets from London Gibraltar had different coupons. London Gibraltar one sector, Gibraltar Torremolinos another sector, Torremolinos Gibraltar another sector, and Gibraltar, London, the last one. So we used to exchange the, the, the coach ticket for a real coach ticket. And we used to send them to the, with our own bus to Spain and then bring them back to, to the other. Uh, uh, I have very little time now. So <laughs> uh, uh, at, at my advanced age, I'm still, I'm still not retired. Like Sir Joe Bosano. <laughs> but I, I, am, I am still active, very active, very active. In, I'm a, a travel consultant and I specialize on group travels and you know where to. <laughs> Madeira and Malta. And also I do genealogy, the genealogy which I've done for many, many years. And I want something else now. <laughs> and you stay here. You stay here. I'm going to present Julian, who really deserves this, the family tree of his mother's family. <laughs> Thank you very much. But I have to join you. I have to wipe my children. Oh, wow. And I wish Julian all the very best in his future career as a playwright. Oh. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, wow. What a surprise. What a pleasure. Ladies and gentlemen, Luis Pereira.